Hello and welcome to Center for Special Data Infrastructure and Land Administration, Department of Infrastructure Engineering, the University of Melbourne. I'm very pleased to present to you a demonstrator project as part of the Northwest Metropolitan Region of Melbourne Data Access and Integration, which is supported by Australian National Data Service and, and also Australian Urban Research Infrastructure Network, ORIN. This project is about housing affordability and we have developed a tools to facilitate the decision making in this project. We are going to present to you and showing you how the system works and also the functionality of this system which can help you and help us in the way that we can manage our land and also we generating land for housing. Thank you. Now let us start and presenting the system to you. But before going through that one, I would like again to acknowledge the support from Australian National Data Service and, and also Australian Urban Research Infrastructure Network, ORIN, that uh, put the support to run this project with four demonstrators and housing affordability is one of the demonstrator. But in general, well, the objectives on, uh, of the main projects are around identifying and securing data related to health, housing, affordability, economic productivity, transport and sustainability, and also to develop an integrated database and data services and for conducting the four demonstrator project with housing affordability is one of them and also maximize the potential for future research through collaboration across the research and government communities based on this now we can start and showcasing the housing affordability platform which we have developed this section demonstrates the capability of data integration as a tool to enhance housing research and analysis. In particular, it focuses on housing affordability issues in the Northwest Corridor of Baraba. The tool is intended to achieve three things. First, to identify developable land persons and properties that have potentials for residential development. Two, to analyze land administration processes that impact approval of development rights and lastly to understand demand factors influence on housing affordability now briefly this is an open source web-based geospatial portal there are two functional modules here the first one is the development potential analysis that measures the DPI and the potential of the land. The second one is the development assessment analysis. The system is designed to be flexible, to accommodate variabilities and preferences in each jurisdiction. Some two tips are provided as prompts to guide the users in the selection of variables and setting of parameters. So users are free to contrast the variables in a way to align with their own assumptions and local knowledge of the place. Now, let us consider some scenarios by looking closely at the two models. The first model is the development potential analysis and is divided into two broad sections. The first section on the left deals with the identification of the potentials and the second section deals with the possible constraints that might be imposed on the available land on the left. Now to start with, we need to select the local government areas to be included in the analysis. Now, the first section here, the first box, calculates the development potential index. The index varies from 0 to 1 
with higher value indicating higher development potential. For the purpose of this demonstration, let us make this 0.7. Now, the user may, might be interested to know the implication of distance to the transport uh, facilities, especially public transport. In this regard, you might want to know how close is the available land to train routes, train stations, and uh, tram routes. In this case, it tracks the slider to desirable limits, which it does. The same thing could be done to distance to public places or public facilities by just dragging this to desirable extent. Then the user might decide to pick the land uses. In this case, we are interested in residential, so we're clicking on residential land use. Now, if the user is more curious and he wants to know what type of constraints are imposed on the available land on the left side, then decides to select all the variables on the right side to, to be able to analyze how these constraints impact on the potentials as we have on the left side. After selecting all the desirable constraints of variables, it clicks on analyze. Now the Second model is development assessment analysis. And the essential thing here is to be able to determine the efficiency of development assessments in the study area. Just like the first one, we have to select the local council areas to be included in the analysis then the first section here deals with the number of days determining the number of days that it normally takes to get development assessment and the user possibly might be interested in knowing how number of objections impact on number of days for assessment and possibly wants to know whether the council requested for further information or whether there was public notice in form of publication regarding the development or where there are regular issues. Now the second category here deals with the the type of application the categories of application tested. In some instances, the user might be interested in the number of new additions, the number of drawings that are added to the existing one. Possibly wants to select this. On this side, he might possibly be interested in determining the change of use or wants to know the change of views in terms of what is changing that from residential to other uses or from other uses to residential council. And the next category is deals with issues uh, that indicates the application outcomes. Whether the application is still in progress or whether the permit has been issued or whether the permit was issued with conditions or so many other considerations that like this could be selected here. There are instances where application are referred to FICAT. So the user may be interested in whether the case was reviewed to FICAT for review or for assessment and the time it takes to get this done. All these are the parameters that could be selected here. And like the first one, the user clicks analyze. I hope by now you have uh, learned how the system works and also hopefully you can 
use this system for your uh, activities and project in summary I would like once again to thank all the supporters of this project and also would like to acknowledge uh, the support of Melbourne University and also Australian government through Department of Industry, Innovation, Science, Research and Territory Education and also Victorian government for the support of the Northwest Melbourne in this project and again ANTS and ORINS actually support here and I would also acknowledge the support of our team in Center for Special Data Infrastructure and Land Administration and for further information regarding this project and also further research associated with this kind of, kind of uh, area you can visit our website through www.csdila.unimelp.edu.au I look forward to working with you and answering your question. Thank you.